of experience in the field of media in the various capacities as a TV news anchor, as a media commentator, in the internet and online media. And currently, he serves at the pleasure of the president as the secretary for the Philippine, uh, for the Presidential Communication Operations Office. So, dear viewers, in Dynamic Living Totally You, we present to you Communicating Change with PCOO Secretary Martin Andanar. Magandang araw sa iyo, Sec. Magandang araw. Good day to you, Dr. Jean, and to all of our viewers, not only on television, but on the different screens, on the cell phone, on your iPads, on yes. your computers, desktops, uh, wherever you are around the world, good day to you. Yes, it's also a pleasure for Dynamic Living to have you, sir. So we'll start off with what is the function of the PCOO? Kasi karamihan ng mga tao, hindi nila naiintindihan ano ang trabaho talaga ng PCOO. Magandang tanong yan. The government communications has two aspects. One is the spokesperson. Mm -hmm. So he is the person who speaks on behalf of the president. So kung anong sabihin ni Presidente, yun ang sasabihin niya sa publiko. He will communicate it directly to the people. The PCOO is the medium mm -hmm. where the spokesperson speaks through. Mm -hmm. Kami yung nagmamanage ng TV, kami nagmamanage ng radyo, ng Philippine News Agency, ng Philippine Information Agency. Kami rin yung nag para sa National Printing Office or sa Apple Production Unit. We also manage the Intercontinental Broadcasting Corporation or IBC and uh, a government agency called the Bureau, uh, the, the Bureau of Communication Services. Na In ngayon. other words, kayo po yung nagdadala ng balita at kung ano man ang gustong iparating ng ating gobyerno sa mga tao. Hmm. Kami ang nagdadala ng impormasyon mm -hmm. through the different platforms that we have including mm -hmm. the radio, television, Malacanang. Mm -hmm. And it is the private media that produces that information into news content. Mm -hmm. Kasama na dyan Kasama yung, na. yung, yung government private, media. Yes. Uh, kasama yung government, government media, uh -huh. government media na PTV, uh, Philippi, uh, the PBS mm -hmm. or the Philippine Broadcasting uh, Service at kasama rin po yung private media. Mm -hmm. So we give unadulterated uh, to the most um, a transparent mm -hmm. uh, way uh, we release the information from the president, from the government, and it's up to the private media to Gusto to po yung sinabi it. ninyo, Sec, unadulterated, yeah. transparent uh, data and mm -hmm. information. And so, pagkaganyan, sinabi natin unadulterated, transparent um, information, when it is a government-run agency, for example, it's a TV5, di po ba? O kaya naman yung PTV or um, whatever government uh, in, um, government agencies we have, they will bring it out. But then there comes a gap between what your office will bring out and that of the private entities. So how are you going to blend and marry the two so that the information that will come out will really be, you know, what it should be? Magandang tanong yan, Jean, kasi... Uh, mm -hmm. In the advent mm -hmm. of new technology like the internet, mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, resulted to the development of different applications, including social media, mm -hmm. sa atin ang pinakamalakas ay Facebook. Di ba? Lahat um, yata ng tao may Facebook. Uh, remember, in 2016, on the month of June, on the 30th day, that was the inauguration of the president. Mm -hmm. uh, we were one of the first countries to stream a presidential inauguration live on through Facebook, Facebook through Facebook and remember that the technology of uh, Facebook live back then was relatively new mm -hmm. uh, we went uh, Facebook went on a data on, on a, a fourth quarter of 2015 mm -hmm. tapos nung kampanyahan in 2016 uh, sporadically used mm -hmm. and then eventually used talaga so uh, during the inauguration we streamed the uh, inauguration live and from that time on uh, after i talked to facebook we decided to stream every presidential official um, activities activity mm -hmm. or, or, or speech now of course walang editing na nangyayari doon mm -hmm. unlike before the past uh, years na ang trabaho ng radio television malacanang is to give the speech 
to private media, to PTV, mm -hmm. and then they are given the leeway to, to edit. Mm -hmm. Diba? Mm -hmm. Ito, Wala talaga. Ito, i-edit man ng mm -hmm. private media, the netizens can always say, ito ka muna. Napanood ko na yun. Napanood ko yun eh. Ito uh -huh. yung sinabi niya, hindi naman yun sinabi niya. Parang nakalimutan nata i-balita yung unang sinabi ng presidente. So, in short, Sec, uh -huh. uh, media now, we, you know, with this advent of technology, media now can be used to its maximum capacity. And this can be actually utilized to the advantage of the government. Tama ka. Uh, the people, uh, first and foremost, are now empowered mm -hmm. to uh, do their own reading, to do their own viewing and analysis of a particular event that was streamed live, unadulterated, mm -hmm. walang mga walang edit, binago doon. Uh -huh. walang walang edits, doon. Uh -huh. And it's up to them to decide whatever they heard about uh, the president mm -hmm. saying um, or delivering about a particular a topic, for example, it's politics or China, whatever. Pero, oh. Sec, eh, in your capacity as the secretary there and head of the PCOO, how do you handle now, let me ask you, how do you handle issues? Like, for example, eh, lumabas sinabi ng spokesperson ganito, o kaya naman sinabi ni President ganito. And then, ikaw, have you had instances wherein hindi ka rin prepared sagutin yung tanong ng mga netizens o ng mga nanood o kaya nakinig? Because mm -hmm. apparently, the truth has been twisted or whatever has been said will now be given a different shade of meaning. Mm -hmm. Doc Jean, I think dyan pumapasok yung uh, maturity mm -hmm. ng uh, tao. And uh, w when you are mature, then you have a, a certain a level of patience, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and you do not knee-jerk and, and say just anything. Um, Kapag sinasabi ni Presidente isang bagay tapos iba, iba yung interpretation ng, mm -hmm. ng tao, ng media, etc. Uh, first is that I have to talk to the presidential spokesperson mm -hmm. because he is the one in charge to, yes. to, to say what the President says or to interpret whatever the President says. Uh, number two, uh, since we have the technology already, mm -hmm. uh, what I would do is I would go back to the full speech. Mm -hmm. We have the video, we have the transcription. So I do not just comment right away. Unless I know when I was there, first-hand information, I was present during the time the president uh, blurted out certain words, mm -hmm. then I could uh, comment. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, I would wait for the right time when I have the right data with me. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, th this is what we did uh, for the administration. We opened uh, the entire government mm -hmm. uh, by using technology. Number two, we opened the entire government by using a uh, an executive order, uh, which the PCO championed, the executive order number two, mm -hmm. which is the freedom of information. I know you know that yes, already. Yes, and I'm asking mm -hmm. you a follow-up on mm -hmm. that. Yes, please proceed. Yes, uh, and then uh, we also uh, worked hard during our first two months to have an administrative order AO number one signed by the president to protect the media, thereby protecting also the freedom of speech mm -hmm. that uh, is inscribed in the constitution. So you have you have that AO number one, and you the, have the, the executive P order number two, which strengthens uh, the uh, freedom of uh, information mm -hmm. and also the right to information as inscribed in the constitution. So you see, you're you're strong in the technology. You're strong in the policy, and when you marry it together, then you'd have a transparent government. And I believe that that explains uh, mm -hmm. the president's popularity until today. Yes, actually, that's one of the issues mm -hmm. there. The thing there is, you mentioned about the FOI. Mm -hmm. And now, if you really look at it, Secretary, how, how are we going to marry FOI or the freedom of information with the bill of rights of an individual to just say anything about anything about against a person or against any governance of the current administration. So how, how are we going to blend that together? There's a, a thin line between uh, press freedom, mm -hmm. uh, freedom of speech, and uh, one's responsibility uh, 
to uh, carry out that freedom and the civil liberties of people that you may hurt. Mm -hmm. So that's why in the law, nandyan din yung uh -huh. libel, nandyan uh -huh. din yung slander. So therefore, uh, we should really tread carefully. Mm -hmm. We cannot just say whatever we want to say here uh, on um, dynamic living. That's true. The total you, because we know that people are watching mm -hmm. and uh, whatever we say uh, could be misconstrued. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have to be responsible. So, gusto ko po yung sinabi yung responsible. Ibig sabihin po noon eh, it's the responsibility of the one who releases the information and the one who receives it and the one who will be interacting and interpreting that kind of um, news or data that is given out. That, that's correct. Mm -hmm. That's completely correct. My civil liberties is, uh, has a limit. Mm -hmm. And the limit is when I begin to affect your civil liberties. Mm -hmm. So for instance, yes. you're in a, uh, you have an apartment, right? And in your apartment, you have your sound system and, and you're so loud, a sound system. And now, the other person cannot sleep. And the other person, the next door cannot sleep. Uh -huh. That's true. So you, your privacy in your mm -hmm. own home is also dependent uh, on the privacy of the other person next door. So let's yeah. talk about international um, issues, um, mm. SEC. Eh, alam naman natin, internationally sometimes, our governance or the government that we are in is mm. well accepted already. You know, we are very proud to become Filipinos. You know, in mm. one of my travels abroad, I met people who were asking me if I come from the Philippines. And when I said yes, and then they started saying, oh, you are, you, are, you, we, you should be proud about your president. You should be proud of what he's mm. doing now. But my question is, internationally, sometimes you also know and we also know mm. that it can be misconstrued. I mean, there will, be yes. an, there will be a thin line of agreement between our policies about the news that we come out with, with how the international community perceives it. So how do you, in the PCOO, try to address this? Well, the difference between this government and the last government is uh, this government has uh, so many critics from the liberal left. Mm -hmm. um, and, and these liberal left people are all over the Western world. <laughs> um, th there will always be differences in opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, our president is not for the legalization of um, party drugs, is not for the legalization of um, medical mm -hmm. drugs. But in other countries in the Western world, they are. Mm -hmm. So talagang nagkakabangga talaga namang opinion. And uh, unfortunately uh, for us, uh, very dominant yung liberal left media sa United States, America, and even sa, sa Europa. Even Donald Trump is have, having mm -hmm. a difficult time so in uh, other in, words, in what media. you're saying, Secretary yeah. uh, Heto, this is one of the challenges that you in your office is faced with. Yes, th that's why uh, with the absence of press attaches, mm -hmm. because uh, during the time of uh, President Cory Aquino, hindi tinuloy yung, yung ating uh, mga press attaches sa iba't ibang mission sa buong mm -hmm. bansa. So with the absence of uh, press attaches, what we did was to um uh, in initiate a uh, division mm -hmm. uh, which we call the office of the global media affairs so we had to create that division from scratch mm -hmm. in order for us to be able to manage and to be able to identify media organizations and personalities that are neither left nor, nor right. Yes. Yung nasa gitna lang. Mm -hmm. Or right. Neutral right. Dapat, so, uh -huh. so that we know where to bring our material. Mm -hmm. Who to talk to. I mean, there's no point of taking your argument to a media personality or organization that's already dead set and not agreeing with you. Mm -hmm. So you might as well take it to somebody mm -hmm. who will at least give you the chance to argue your case. Mm -hmm. In other words, oh. to give you the benefit of the doubt. Correct. Uh -huh. We'll take <laughs> yeah. a very short break, Secretary, and we'll be re returning back here in Hope Channel. Please stay tuned.
Welcome back to Dynamic Living the Total You with our episode in focus, communicating change with PCOO Secretary Martin and Anar. Sir, balikan ko po kayo. Medyo light naman tayo. Medyo yeah. heavy yung kanina. Eh. <laughs> what is your typical day? Oh, that's a good question. Um, my, my typical day is um, when I wake up early in the morning, I would go through my cell phone. Uh, meron kaming mga Viber threads dito na nakalagay yung mga balita mm -hmm. sa isang araw. Uh, what I would do is I would be um, sending all of the front pages mm -hmm. of both tabloid and broadsheets to the cabinet. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, I would go for a run uh, in my village. And then after I do my running, I would read at least a chapter of a book, mm -hmm. any book that I like to read, whatever I see. And then after that, I would uh, go to my piano mm -hmm. and uh, do my scales on the piano and perhaps play a, a tune or two. Uh, I don't eat breakfast, so I, I would just have my, my tea in the morning and vitamins. And then uh, I would send off my, my son to school. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'd say goodbye to my wife. <laughs> and then In short, you have quite a day to start it. So you, you yes. always have a routine that will, you know, more or less prepare you for the coming, you know, hours for your typical yes. work day. Yeah, because running, uh, running would take my, my mind off the stress, mm -hmm. uh, playing the piano too, because mm -hmm. you're focused on the notes, uh, reading mm -hmm. uh, any book that's not, politics also <laughs> it, it is good uh -huh. and then um, from from that time on it's all about uh, work government yeah anong bagay o anong news o ano yung nabasa mo for the day because you said you're going to scroll mm -hmm. through your phone okay. read and then go through whatever news are there ano kaya ang nakakabigay sa iyo ng pagkagulat o that will surprise you and will tell you na oops today something big is going to happen or are you Hmm. Are you always prepared? Kung kung baga, kasi minsan meron pa rin namang nakaka-surprise. Yeah. Kasi 15 years ako sa newsroom. Mm -hmm. At sa newsroom, Dr. Jean, uh, ano eh, everyday ka magugulat eh. Uh -huh. na bagong balita pati. So you get used to it. It becomes second nature. Uh, mm. Every day, seeing uh, different news, good or bad news. And it becomes a part of you. Mm -hmm. So I guess I was, I was trained and I was uh, directed by God to this certain, mm -hmm. certain path that led me to where I am mm -hmm. uh, right now. And it's funny, I just have an anecdote. This is, mm -hmm. this, dif this is an, uh, a way On you know, of, of, of tangent. No? Uh, four days ago, I received an alumni award mm -hmm. uh, at my alma mater at Xavier University, again, the Oro City. At Anerika Gayan. Gayan. And, and I received uh, uh, the outstanding alumni award and I received it at an AVR or audio uh, visual, visual room, room um, which was the f original AVR where I first delivered my um, oratorical speech mm -hmm. which led me to be a broadcaster. Mm -hmm. So sunod sunod yon. Uh -huh. no, no, uh, I think God from there uh, prepared you. Prepared me. Maybe Saint Ignatius uh -huh. pre prepared me. To where uh, you are now. To where I am now. So I'm not so. Uh, uh, but would you say, Sekna, having been in the media, you as a media personality, having been there in the 15 years that you mentioned, made you ready and prepared for your work in the PCO? Palagay ko, Doc Jean, because uh, when I was in TV5, my main responsibility was to innovate. Mm -hmm. Uh, think of ways how to uh, spread the news mm -hmm. from our uh, News 5. Uh, so uh, it was my responsibility. I was the one who initiated News5.com.ph, News 5 everywhere. And I was also respons responsible for uh, the imaging of Radio Cinco, mm -hmm. uh, doing the voiceover, and all these things, na bago, na bago. And uh, I felt that uh, government media needed a boost needed mm -hmm. some form of uh, reform because mm -hmm. matagal si napabayaan from the time of uh, the downfall of President Marcos up to today, up to 2016 uh, of June, 
hindi talaga binibigyan ng pansin, pansin mm -hmm. uh, maybe ng Department of Budget and Management o ng Kongreso. Kasi nga, nagkaroon tayo ng paranoia eh, mm -hmm. sa state media during the time of yes, uh, President Marcos. So, it's normal. Mm -hmm. So, kaya pa-decline ng pa-decline. Yung PNA, zero social media presence. Um, PTV only had 30,000 30, followers. PCOO uh, only had, what, 4,000 or 5,000 followers. And now you have PTV with 2 million followers. Yes. You have uh, a PNA that already has social media presence, over 150,000 followers, 200,000 uh, millions of... Uh, dati, kasi mm -hmm. ang, ang PNA, Doc Jean, ang nagbabasa niyan, nasa mga 17,000 visitors a, a month. A month. Ngayon, nasa 2 million plus na. Wow. 2.4 so, million. So, grabe yung pagta, uh, you know, oh. dapat, ang pagtalon niya through the years na hmm. medyo nag-evolve siya, eh, di ba? Yeah. Pero ang tanong ko po sa inyo, hmm. Sek, eh, what are the current programs that you have in the PCO that will maximize technology? Aside from yung nga Facebook, yung mga ganyan. Eh. Ano pa kaya ang mga programang meron kayo na hmm. sa paniniwala ninyo can really hmm. help boost, you know, giving the correct information mm -hmm. to the people of the Philippines? All right. That's a very good question. Uh, the Senate of the Philippines, this Congress, mm -hmm. already approved the budget of the PCOO for next year. And that includes our project. And this project is the first National Government Strategic Communications Academy mm -hmm. that will be built in Manolo Fortich Bukidnon. This Academy will teach information officers in the barangay level, mm -hmm. in the regional level, and in the national level. Wala, in other words, walang pipiliin ito? Walang pipiliin. Uh -huh. Kasi wala tayong academy na ganun, Doc Jin. Uh -huh. So ngayon, meron na tayong academy na nakafocus lang sa pag-research. Research in communications, research and information. And this one in Bukidnon will have, will have a community radio, a community television, digital. Mm -hmm. It will have PNA, it will have PIA, everything under the sun. About and it's going to happen next year. It's going to be built next year because inapproved na tayo ng, mm -hmm. uh, uh, ng uh, Senado at ng Congreso. So that, that's one project that I'm really looking forward to. And for the longest time, wala tayong major media hub sa Mindanao. And even in the Visayas. What, what, mm -hmm. what we have is here in the Visayas Avenue. Yes, City. here in uh, Quezon City. Next year, by first quarter or second quarter, we are already launching the Mindanao Media Hub in Davao City. It's a state-of-the-art media facility that will house PTV, uh, Philippine Broadcasting Service, Radio Pilipinas, FM1, FM2, including Philippine News Agency, PI, lahat ng mm -hmm. nasa government media will be there. After that, we will build Visayas Media Hub in Cebu. And then, hopefully, may and oras pa to be able to build a Luzon Media Hub para ma-upgrade naman yung meron tayo dito sa uh -huh. Visayas Media. And the, the ultimate goal for this, having all these hubs, developing the academy, the ultimate goal is actually to train our people, right? The, the ultimate goal for this is to be able to deliver mm -hmm. information to the public, unadulterated, being able to educate the public, give them media literacy programs that we've never had before, being able to reach the highlands, the lowlands, the midlands, the hinterlands of the Philippines. We have 7,100 islands. Mm -hmm. Now, we've always been complaining, us Mindanaoans, and this, maybe the, the Visayans also. Mm -hmm. why, is it, why is it always in Metro Manila? Yes. Why is it always in Imperial Manila? Now we're doing it. Uh, the Mindanao Media Hub will be launched this second or first quarter of 2020. This is a dream come true for mm -hmm. all of us in Mindanao. And you will also have one in Cebu. In Visayas. In Visayas. Yes. So hearing you talk mm -hmm. about this, Secretary, it gives hope actually to our people that here comes, you know, a program by the government whereby information will really be delivered to everybody equally. Equally. Uh -huh. And not only delivered, but there will also be a training academy mm -hmm. that will teach every information officer of government equally so we're all in one page we're all in one paradigm information is very important yes and you know you you win the information game you you win half of the game already mm. uh in a world that is mired with uh, fake news uh technologies that we cannot almost handle ourselves mm. we need to work together mm. as a government and also work together uh, with the private sector to be able to bridge the gap of uh, 
the technological changes that are giving negative effects that we cannot manage. Mm -hmm. So by, by, by having a government that's ready, by providing the necessary tools and the environment for learning, I can see that there is hope mm -hmm. uh, of a better communication system and in our country. And this hope actually of being able to communicate properly you know, and adequately, this is now something that the young generation can actually hang on to. Eh. Kasi sila yung mga kabataan, sila yung magpapatuloy mm. niyan, Sek. Eh. That's correct. That's correct. Um, as I mentioned earlier, ang daming problema mm -hmm. na kinakarap natin. Mga bagong problema that we never had maybe a, a decade ago, mm -hmm. two decades ago. Uh, for instance, uh, mental health problem is a huge problem. It is. In, in our country. And one of the culprits uh, of, of mental health problem, they say, is technology. Mm -hmm. Kasi minsan, wala nang, eh, cellphone na lang ang kausap ng bata. Lalo na sa mga kabataan. Oh. Marami na tayong mga special children because of this lack of communication inside uh, the homes. That is why we're mm -hmm. strengthening the Philippine Information Agency mm -hmm. for PIA to f really be the ultimate on-the-ground communications agency of the country. Now, it, it's not just about me talking to you through cell phone. It's, it's us. Well, us, person to person. Level, uh, yes. Person to person. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have to feel that government is there yes. for you. Actually, yun yung reason why objective ni Dynamic mm. Living, inviting government agencies, SEC, because mm. we want to bring home to the homes, you know, we want to bring the news, the activities of each government agency to the homes of our, of our people, because mm. at the end of the day, they need that correct guided information. Eh. Well, so thank you so much, Secretary so Andanar, for gracing our show. What is your message now to our viewers, uh, please? It, it's really my pleasure, Dr. Jean. Thank you so much for watching uh, this program, Dynamic Living. The Total You is a fantastic program, and we'd like to thank uh, Hope Channel for giving us the opportunity to, to communicate with all of our viewers, uh, especially the viewers of, of this channel. And uh, l let me just be uh, clear that uh, it, it is great to be working under this government. Uh, for instance, the president assigned me as the cabinet officer for regional development and security in Region 10. Now, before, hindi naman pinapadala yung PCO secretary sa region para kausapin ng mga gobernador. So now, every region has accords. I know specific problems of region. Two days ago, I was in Misamis Occidental. I know that the problem there is the mismatch in education of high school and grade school. Now, with, with this specific directive of the president, it gives us the opportunity to know the problems on the ground. This is what I'm trying to say about on the ground communication, person to person mm -hmm. uh, communication, mm -hmm. relationship, uh, gives you uh, more insight to what the people are really experiencing down there. And because of this, we're able to um, report to the president. Nevertheless, I want to thank you for the opportunity and uh, good day. Okay, so dear viewers, you see that is what I call grassroots level approach. Remember that an educated, informed, and enlightened citizenry will actually bridge that gap between what the government is doing and what we as citizens of the Philippines should be doing. Kasi dapat po ay magkasama tayo, kapit, you know, kapit bisig at kapit kamay tayo upang marating natin kung ano yung ating dapat na inaadhika para sa ating bayan. At sabi nga po dito ni Isaiah 52 verse 7, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news and to those who proclaim peace. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat.